So let me check swipe into this brief. Perfect. Swipe into this brief. Swipe into this brief. Done. Done. Okay. Right into this week. Capture this link and uh, done. And uh, let's do one thing. I'll get some look back on our one. Like this, right? Slash eight. Move right, so five look backs on our one. Three, three dot three dot three dot three dot three. Loop back does not have a macro as well, right? It's a virtual interface and they have a separate broadcast domain. And we don't need to put the node shutdown command on the loop back because it's a virtual interface. It's not associated with any kind of hardware. Then all done, do the same this configuration. Capture this thing is already captured. Perfect. So router HERP network, come on. Network zero 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 zero. Okay. The perfect at 0, 0, 0, and R2 as well as router EHRP network 0, 0, 0, 0. And you can see update this one multicast. Come on. Can you see that this update packet we have, uh, it's a multicast, right? And when we have uh, all the outing information, the full update we have. Done? No. So I have formed the neighborship between the router number one and router number two. I have a neighborship between this guy right, right now. Let's form the neighborship between this guy. Okay. So go to router number five, and what I'm going to do over there. I said router EGRP number one network. What? One zero. Yeah, perfect. And now have a look. Have a look. Stop this guy. Come on, mic is on. Can you see this update packet? Okay, this is the null update packet. Okay, not a big deal. This one, one of the, this is end of the table. Okay. So now after they have uh, in it, and this is the end of the table. Come on. No, see the difference. Then, right? So both are, uh, if you see over there, Come full update, but unicast exactly right. The full update, uh, unicast. So, what I have deal over there, I just formed the neighborship between this guy. So, if this is the unicast packet and some multicast, they are a full update and they also have a full update, right? So, what happened actually, I already formed the neighborship between this guy to this guy. After that, what happened? I formed the neighborship between this guy to this guy. So instead of R1 will send the multicast address, uh, send the update packet on the multicast address, it's sending only to the one or five because I just formed the neighborhood with the one or five. So this is also as well. Yesterday we have seen this part, right? But just a theoretical. I I actually forgot to uh, like you know tell you about this practical part. So this is, you can see the unicast update as well as 
1 r1 r prime check the order do so ip root here jabe then not in the first time been i think so you didn't uh, go through the video yesterday video and instead of first time only in the multicast network the first time in the multicast net multi access network if you have then it will do the first time then now Stop this time. GRP reply packet. We were discussing about the reply, right? Query reply and this thing. So based on the update, it uses a uh, multicast or unicast, right? Based on the neighbor, sir. Okay, based on neighborship. Like, uh, you know, uh, if you have a unicast neighbor, uh, like you, with the neighbor statement, then it will use one unicast update right first. If they have a multi-access neighbor, it will use the multicast update. And again, if you have a null update, it will go for the unicast. And again, what happened if in the multicast access network, if the new neighbor will be discovered, then it will go for the unicast. Oh, okay, got it. Guys, please be on time. Okay. We'll like, you know, we'll create a lots of problems in the future, right? If you're missing the single steps over there. One minute, let me open the Come on. Yeah, form it, act it. Protocol number 88. We have done with the hello packet. We have done with the acknowledge packet as well as. We have done with the update packet as well as. Okay. We have done with the query packet. Reply packet, what reply packet is in here? EIGRP reply packet are sent in the response to the query and carry their sender current distance to the destination after talk, uh, talking into the account to the topology change, right? It means that in a simple language, I'm going to tell you, if you're sending the query packet, if you're sending the query packet and what query packet is going to inform, it's just going to inform to the another order, hey, I lose this information. Do you have any alternate path to reach this guy? What happened? R2 has to give the reply. Doesn't matter either it will give the positive reply or negative reply, but R2 has to give. So the reply packet are sent in the response of what? Query packet. And reply packet are always will be a unicasted to the original of the query packet, right? 
and it delivers as a reliability. It means that if I'm sending the reply packet, right, if the router number two will send the reply packet to the router number one, router number one has to give the acknowledge. Yesterday, we have seen the negative reply, right? If you have a look over there, also the first or pre configuration of the router number one, so IP interface brief, so run section AGRP, right? Yep, exactly. So if you see, uh, we have a pre configuration on our router number one. If you go back to the router number two now, so IP interface brief, so run section AGRP. Done. And if you go, go to the router number three now, show IP interface brief, show run section AGRP. All great. And if you go back to the router number four now, show IP interface brief, show run section AGRP. Okay, I don't have, let's compare the AGRP. All done. Copy this thing right now. Capture this link. Just one moment. Yeah. Try to understand one thing. If I'm going to lose this network, right? This network I'm talking, this loop back. That's behind the R1. Okay. This is behind the R1. What happened? R1 will send the QD packet to the R2. If you do one thing, do debug. Debug AJP packet turns. Come on. And on R2 as well as debug IP AJP packet turns. Right. So IP root, if you see, I have this information in my routing table, right? 1 or 0 or 0. I'm talking to this path right now. Okay. That's coming from the R1 is sending this information to the R2, right? If you have a look, on R1, if I'm going to lose this information interface, look back number one, shut down, sending the QD packet. QD. And the reply as well. On this one. And reply what which route? This one. And legacy metric. And query about this route, right? Same one. Great. And if you have a look, come on. Perfect and uh, great. So if you see, this is the QD packet we have, and the 2.1 is in this QD packet to whom? Destination dot 10, and he's sending, hey, I lose this information, which information one or zero or just last eight, and I'm going to put the infinite matrix, right? I'm just informing my neighbor, hey, I lose this information. Do you have a backup path? What R2 will do? R2 has to send the reply packet, right, in the response of QD packet. And the reply packet always will be a unicast, right? Same network. And what reply is this? Negative reply. Now, let's do one thing. Let me take a screenshot and I'll paste in the paint file. That will be good. Okay. Oh. Now, let's come back to again on R1 as the no shutdown. If you see as, as well as I'm sending the QD packet from 0 slash 0 interface, right? At the same time, what happened? R2 will give them reply. 
somewhere. Do not check it out. Receive query from the two allot one neighbor, right? R R two R one send the query back to the R two, and what R two will do over there? R two will send out. Show me the reply, please. Great. Now, what I'm going to do now? Let's up this interface. No shutdown. All good. So now R2 will have this information. So IP to HGRP, you can see that now this interface is working fine. And I got this information. This is the new update. Can you see? New update. Great. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to lose this information. I'm going to lose this information. If you have a look over there, do show IP root one minute. Do you all do show IP root AGRP? Whatever the information that I'm learning from the R3, no any information, right? Great. Into positive, well, I have some information, right? From the R3 as well as this guy. Right? Now, what happened if I'm going to lose this network, right? This interface. What R1 will do? R1 is now going to find backup path. And this is the good thing about the EGRP. They maintain the backup path, right? This is the backup path, right? Can you see the 3.0? This 30.3 is a backup path. 4.0, this is the backup path, right? So what happened now? R1 is going to find the backup path for which network? I'm just consider this guy right now. It will find the backup path for this guy as last. 3.0.0.0. Because I lose this information, right? What happened? R1 will inform to the R2, hey R2, do you know about this 3.0.0.0? Previous case, what happened, guys? Try to understand. In the previous case, I lose this information. And R1 is asking to the R2, hey, R2, do you know about 1.0.0.0? What R2 will tell? No, I don't know. And it was giving the negative reply, right? Because this network is behind the R1. But if I'm going to lose this network, take example. What happened? R1 is asking R2, R2, hey R2, do you know about this guy? Because I had a backup path previously, but now after losing this information, I don't know what R2 will do. R2 will say, yes, I knew the backup path for this network, right? And it will give the positive reply. And in the positive reply, what happened? They will give you the actual metric, like how to get 3.0 network. What's the metric from, right? What's the cost from? What's the metric? What's the distance from me to the this network? So they will give the actual metric for R2 to the R1. And in this actual metric, what happened in the reply packet, they will put the normal information. Now this reply packet is behaved like your update. If you have a look, go to R1, lose this information, interface 0 slash 1, shut down. Oh, come on. Where is that? What happened? Oh, this last one.
एक मिनट दोस्तों नो सलाम दो स्वर की जगह पे नहीं हुई अब तो आप नहीं हो सकते और दो स्वर में तो जो स्वर अरे वो आप इस वास्तव से लाइट में तो प्रोजेक्ट और दो स्वर की जगह पे तो प्रोजेक्ट नया इनफिनाइट वन What R two will do over there? Reply, and the reply. What happened? Can you see this difference? And uh, this is what I want to show you. And this three dot zero, the reply packet. So this guy, and this was in the query packet. Infinite delay, right? What's happening? I'm sending the normal. This is called as a positive reply. He's just informing. Yes, no. I do. I do have a backup path. I'm telling you this is the matrix to from me to reach the snake for three or zero or zero. Now, in EHRP, yeah, are we sending? No, huh? of course. Are we sending the query packet? Right. See. No, sorry. Now, what I told you, unmute. You are unmuted. You can unmute yourself. Sir, in sir, sir, in first case, when R one lost their own network, they yeah. can send query to the network, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Now in this case, R three lose their network, and now R one not able to reach that network, right? So R one will send query. Or uh, only request? Do you have this route? Any backup path to R two or not? Like yeah, go on. Means first and both are different case, right? Only both are yeah, of course. Both are different. In the previous case, what happened? If you see, I'm sending the query packet right to this guy, yeah. and in this case, what happened? What's the matrix for this network? What's the matrix is happening? Legacy and what for reply packet is coming from me? Uh, from the two L two to this guy. The reply packet is a same route and same format. This is called as a negative reply. Right. Right. But in now case, what happened? 
I'll take a screenshot of it. Give me a moment. Like, come on. And where's the link for three dollars? You start saying. And uh, same case. This guy. Right. In this case, what happened? This is the query packet. Right. 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 Okay. And source to, to, to about one to the one minute two to four or zero or zero ten. And what happened? I'm losing this information. The thirteen or zero network. Right. This guy. This one. This particular link. Right. So what happened? Arun is asking, "Hey, do you have a backup path for this guy? Right. For this network. Three dollar zero slash three dollar zero slash eight. Right. What R two is giving? Yes, I do have a backup path, and it's giving the positive reply. Okay. In both case, R one will send query packet. Yeah, of course. Right. I'm losing the information. The reply, right. Right. But reply will come in different different type. Okay. Yes, yes, got it. Thank you. Now, do you know about the EHGRP? Uh, Arun said the query packet that everyone belongs to the two data. Yes, right. Now, in EHGRP, the good thing about the EHGRP protocol, you know, it has a topology table. And in the topology table, what happened? The topology table maintain the best path. Right, and that best path will be installed in the routing table. At the same time, it's present in a topology table as well as, and this best path is known as successor. At the same time, EHGRP do have ability to maintain the second best path that is present in the uh, that's only present in topology table, right? It's not there in the routing table because it's not a best. Because only the routing table only maintain best path information. So the second, the reason to maintain the right, the reason to maintain the second best path, right, in the topology table, is very simple to make a faster convergence. To make a faster convergence. And how do I get to know that this is the second best path? Because this guy has a higher metric as compared to best. Or this second best path is only present in your topology table, right? And this second best path is known as this backup path. We can call it. Feasible successor and feasible successor only present in your routing table. Feasible successor only comes in the picture, right? Feasible successor only comes in the picture, or we can say the feasible successor only comes in the routing table when successor goes down. Feasible successor only comes in the routing table when successor goes down. So if you have a look right now, I'll do one thing. I'll just in right now we do have a both successor or can you see that both successor means what best path? Can you see from this guy from R1, right? To get this network from R1, I'm present on a router number one from R1 to get this network. I have a two path, right? I can go by this way and I can go by this way. So both are Best and how do I know that both are best because of the best of the matrix, right? Four three five two dollar zero. I'll let you know how this thing is calculated. Don't worry about that. And four three five two dollar zero. Both are best, so both are successor or so in the topology table. What happened? 
will have a both information. One minute. Okay. Interface is down right now. Do show IP root EAGRP and do show IP EAGRP. Can you see? To get this network 4000, we have a two successor. Right? And why this guy is a two successor out right now? Because they have a same metric. Can you see that? And that's why in the routing table, that's why in the routing table, we have a both information. That's why in the routing table, we have a both information because both are successor route. So we have a two successor. So we can call this guy as a two best path. And this best path will be installed in the routing table as well as at the same time, it's present in the Topology table and this best path is known as a successor route. But EHRP has the ability or to we can see that to make a faster convergence, right? To make a faster convergence, what happened? Take example, if this route goes down, let's say example, if this back, uh, if the this take example, this is my primary path, right? And this is my secondary path. If the primary goes down, what happened immediately? This path, this 4.0.0.0.0 or 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 available in the routing table from the 30.3 immediately. I'm not going to wait for the like, you know, the 10 second and 5 second over there. That's called as a faster convergence over there. And this is the beauty of the EHRP that does not provide by the RIP protocol. RIP does not maintain the EHRP uh, topology table. If you have a look, what I can do right now, I'm just going to make a higher metric of this particular link, right? How do I do that? I'm just going to increase the delay. Don't worry about this part. I'll explain you. Done. And now if you see, do show IP root EAGRP. Can you see that? I have a best path for what? So this is my primary path. And this is my what secondary path. Why? Because if you have a look, do show IP HRP topology table. What happened? If you see. Come on. I'll do one thing. I'll remove this guy. I'm not interested in this part. Till this point, not interested. And this part is only interested. Can you see that? Now what happened? I have a one successor out. For this network, 4.0.0 slash 8, we have one successor. Successor means what? Best path, right? Successor means what? It's a best path. Best path successor. And I have a one successor. And which one is there? This is the 4.0.0.0.0. Why the 2L or 2, right? And that has a 4.3.5.2.0 matrix, right? And see, same is there. Why 12 or 2? At the same time, what happened in my topology table, I do have an ability to maintain the second best path. That is called what? It only puts in the topology table, not in the routing table, because this is not a best. And this topology table, sorry, this backup path is known as what? Yep. So now if you see what happened, Higher metric, right? 2969600. It's a higher metric as compared to the 43500, right? So this is what? This is called as a successor route. 
and this is called as a what? But in this case, what happened? Both behaved like a successor. And that's why we have two information in my routing table. In my case, what happened? In the second case, I have a single successor, right? So single successor will be appeared in the routing table, not the feasible successor. So what happened if you see, Right now, I just have this path, right? So if I'm going to send the traffic to the 4.0.0 network, which path I'm going to prefer? Two or two, right? That is this guy, this is the primary path, right? What happened if the primary goes down? If the primary goes down, if you see interface zero slash zero, as I start down with this guy, Immediately, what happened? Secondary comes in the picture. See, do show IP, do show IP root EAGF. It's just a matter of second. Can you see that I was delayed, right? Just a matter of second. And now, what happened? This one is now become the what successor guy. Previously, it was behaved like a feasible successor. Now it's behaved like a successor. Why? Because if the successor is not there, right? If the successor is not there, your secondary path, or we can say the feasible successor, will take a role of successor. If the successor is not there, the feasible successor will take a role of the successor. But what happened if your successor comes in the picture, right? Again, come back. It print, right? Hey, I do have a good metric. Do show IP root EIGRP. See? Done. I got the new ship and what happened? Just a matter of second. And now what happened? This guy again behave like a because I do have a successor. So in your topology table, we have uh, two types of information. One, we have a successor route, and one, we have a feasible successor route. Uh, in, case of, uh, in case of AD, it will choose the laser AD value. In case of matrix, it will choose the higher matrix. Did I say like this? It will always choose the lower matrix. So the good thing about the EHGRP, it has a topology table and that maintain the two types of information. One is the successor route and another is a feasible successor. At the same time, EHGRP topology table route state. So we have a two types of state in the route. One we have an active state and one we have a passive state. Right now, just understand active is bad and passive is goodbye. Just for the right now understanding, because if I'm going to explain you right now this part, right, you will take again one hour plus a lecture, right? So just understand active is bad and passive is good. By default, by default, all it will go to the passive one. You will go, uh, get to know that why this active is bad by tomorrow class. Okay. But yes, active is bad, passive is good in the case of EHGRP. The reason you will know get tomorrow. So if you uh -huh. see all, someone mic is on. If you see all this state, right, passive. These are the route state in the topology table. Every single one. It will seem like a pass, active as well as, I'll let you know tomorrow. Right now, at the same time, EHRP has a 
quick review thrp has a two types of route that we have seen this guy sorry two types of route we have a one we have a feasible successor route that is called as the best route right when we have a feasible successor second best route at the same time eagrp has a two types a route state one we have active one we have a passive at the same time eagrp has a two types of matrix one we have a feasible distance that is called as fd value that's going to represent that from the cost the matrix or we can say the matrix from source to destination and second we have a ad or we can call as so advertised distance or we can call as a reported distance as well as ad rd both are the same meaning the matrix from my neighbor to the destination right so if you see this topology router number 1 router number 2 router number 3 and we have a some server or we can say the one minute router 1 router 2 router 3 router 4 and we have a server right router 1 router 2 router 3 router 4 and grid and we have a submit i'm running over there and this is the Four zero zero, right? The mat. I'm just assuming. I'm just writing the easy to understand. Right? The matrix is twenty on this guy. The matrix is thirty on this guy. Five on this guy. And ten on this guy. Right? Try to understand. Yeah, there are two types of matrix. Right? One is a feasible distance. Feasible distance word. Now you are present over there. Right? Take example. You are present on R one. So you have to think according to you. Right? You are present on R one. You have to always think according to you. So, what physical distance is telling you? Hey, the matrix right from source to destination. So, what is the FD value according to you? The FD for my from router number one is what twenty plus thirty plus five plus ten, fifty, sixty, sixty-five. Right? Twenty plus thirty plus five plus ten. From the matrix from source to destination, right? The matrix from source to destination. At the same time, what happened? We have AD or reported distance. The name suggests that if you have a look at the name, advertised distance, or we can call as a reported distance. It the matrix from my neighbor. Again, you have to think according to you, right? So who is your neighbor? My neighbor is two L or two, right? This guy R two. So from my neighbor, what is the matrix? Thirty plus five plus ten. What is happening? Forty, forty-five. So R two is going to report you. R two is going to report you 
or we can say that R2 is advertising you, hey, from me, the metric is what? The metric is what you are. So these are the two types of matter you will see over there. What happened? This guy. Can you see this diagram? This one. This is the FD value, right? And this FD value will be present in your routing table. This FD value will present in your routing table. You right. This is what this is called as FD value. This point, just uh, pay attention. This is the FD value. This one, sorry. This is called as a FD value. This is called as a RD, or we can call this guy as a ADS plus RD and AD. This is called as a FD. Same thing in this, according to this diagram, this is the downside. This is the feasible success, right? So this guy is called as a what? FD or this guy is called as what? RD or AD. All clear. So we have a two types of metric, right? We have a two types of metric in EHGRP. One we have a physical distance and one we have a advertised distance. And how this metric will be calculated? This metric will be calculated by the, this formula, right? 10 to the power of seven by least bandwidth plus total delay divided by 10 into 256. So what's a uh, bandwidth 10 to the power seven, right? One zero zero three four five six seven. List bandwidth. List bandwidth is your source to destination, right? Source to destination. What is the list bandwidth? So if you have a look from here to here, you have to look the list bandwidth from this guy to this guy. So if you see the bandwidth of this particular interface, right, is what do so. Interface zero slash zero include right? the bandwidth of this particular interface is. This guy, let's copy it. Right. If you go back to the router number to this interface, this guy, right? Zero slash zero. Same information will be there. Again, 10,000. Same. So I'm not going to copy again. If you go back to the show interface, zero slash one. Again, 10,000. So this guy almost same. So this guy is also same. And if you see the R for this interface, zero slash zero. Do so interface zero slash zero include uh, what do we call delay? Same one is there, the bandwidth. And if you go for the loop back, so this guy's a this one. Loop back has a different. So every interface is not like uh, you on a Ethernet. You have a same on a gig ethernet, you have a same on a serial link, you have a same. Every interface media, every media has a different bandwidth and different delay values. See, the loopback is a different one, right? The tunnel interface will be different one. The gig ethernet will be different one. The ethernet will be different. The serial link will be different one. So what are this guys, the lower bandwidth, uh, right? So it's a 10,000. So we can put the 10,000 on the list bandwidth, right? From source to destination, 10,000. After what happened? Then we have a plus total delay. What's the total delay is happening? If you see from R1, the delay is what? 10,000, sorry, 1,000 plus 1,000, and this guy, 5,000. 1,000, 1,000, and 5,000. Look back. So total delay, right? 
Total is seven thousand. So seven thousand divided by ten into two fifty six, right? So this guy will be down, and this guy will be down, and this guy will be down, and this guy will be down. What's happening? One thousand plus seven hundred. This will be seventeen hundred into two fifty six, right? Four three five two zero. Now same thing is happening. So in EHRP, if I'm going to talk from the IGRP perspective, right? IGRP was doing the like you know, IGRP matrix calculation was happening based on the 24 bit, if I'm not wrong, right? EHRP classic mode, right? Right now we are learning the classic mode. I'll let you know what is the classic mode over there. Don't worry about that. It's doing the 32 bit. If you know that's good, otherwise I'll let you know EHRP name mode. Is doing the sixty-four bit. Because IGRP was the you know the IGRP protocol was the you know this guy was the precursor of the you know IGRP protocol, right? So from IGRP is starting the formula is same, right? And how this will be calculated? As I told you that the EHRP is going to use the properties of interface, right? Do so interface. If you see, do so interface zero slash zero. This guy. To calculate the metric. MTU. Bandwidth. Delay. Reliability, load. So these are the five values, right? These are the properties of interface, right? These are the five values that EHRP is uses to calculate the metric. This guy as called as a key values. Key one. That is called as a bandwidth. Key two. That is called as a load. Key three. Called as a reliability, not reliability, delay. Key four is called as a reliability. And key five is going to call as a empty. By default, we are using this one. And by default, we are using this one. The reason is using the K1 and K, uh, K3 is very simple because these are static in nature. Again, this guy is a static in nature. Whereas this guy is not used, these are the dynamic in nature. Dynamic in the nature in the sense of what? This guy, the value of load and the value of reliability will be changed according to the load on the network. This MTU will be never considerable in the metric algorithm. This is given, but it's never used. K5. So by default, if you see the key values will be one over there. It means that we are using for the metric calculation over there. Right, K2 will be zero, K3 will be again one, and K4 will be again zero because I'm not using K5 again will be zero. The load will be increased, right? If I'm going to use the byte, it's deceiver. Can you see the zero is deceiver? 
Genome is disabled. Genome is disabled. I'm not going to use for the matrix calculation over there. You can increase the key values, right? From zero to to fifty-five, or these are behave like a multiplier. Multiplied in the sense of what? If I'm going to take example, let's do one thing. If you see for so do swipe paper above. What value I'm using? K one. That's our bandwidth. And K three. That's a delay. The remaining the K two right? K four and K five will be zero right? I'm not using this thing. And if you see right now, what's mattering is happening? Do show IP root E G R P. It's four three five two dollars right to this to get this network. The mattering is four three. Five two double zero, right? What's key value setting on the key one is one and key three is one, right? Let's see. Router A G R P. What I'm going to do? Matrix weights. First value toss will be always set to the zero, right? Okay. I'll uh, let you know why this thing is in a quality of series because we are using the right now DSCP value. We are we uh, we are not using the toss value right now. Type of service, so it always set to the zero. Then after that, uh, we have a key one. Can you see the how many value I can increase over there? I take example. I'm going to use the hundred over there. I can. It's not a big deal. I can use it. K2. I'm going to make it disable right now because I don't know. K3. I'm going to use the 50 over there. K4. I'm going to make it disable. K5. I'm going to make it disable. What happened? Immediately, your neighborship will be what? Drop. Remember the first second day of the class, the matrix value should be seen right. One R2. K value mismatch right. I have to come with the same value right. These are the neighborship criteria. The key values should be seen, right? And now, then, so if you see, do show IP protocol now. What happened? Now the K one is what? Now the K one is hundred, and K three is what? Fifty. And if you have a look now, do show IP root E G R P. What I am getting over there? This amount. Three, four, five, six, zero, 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 zero. So what I call it? This guy is behave like a multiplier. If you're going to change the key value, first of all, if you want to change the key value, you have to change on a every router in your domain. The domain is what? It's a logical group of router, right? A is domain. A is number one. And this is router number one, router number two, router three, router four. On every router, you have to change the key values. Otherwise, your neighborship will be dropped. First of all, right? The reason is that. And second thing, why they are uh, recommendation to change on every router? Because every router has to knowledge about this thing, how to calculate the matrix, right? So it's never recommendation, guys. It's never recommendation to change the key values. Based on the key values, what happened? Your complete matrix process will be changed, right? It's never a condition to manipulate this thing. But if you come to the CCI, right? In a CCI exam, some task, uh, some task is given like this. Hey, I want a minimum matrix. The minimum matrix in the sense of I need a minimum matrix of the EJRP. The minimum matrix of the EJRP is near around one seven zero three on the Ethernet media, right? So how do I get this thing? I need to enable all the key values to be one. And now have a look. R two, R three, R. Now I'm gonna R one. Do show IP root E G R P. Can you see that? One seven zero three. Once I on the key values, K one will be one, K two will be one. I use the, all these five values like K four will be one, K five will be one, right? Now what happened? Matrix will be one seven zero three. 
this was the some task is given in the cca exam they are just checking your knowledge right like did you like learn the properly and like you know everything but again it's depend on the requirement right if you have a requirement something like that, you know manipulate the map like you know the network you can manipulate it but again it's never recommendation to change this thing in the production right until unless you don't have a complete picture of the network And if you see, even I can disable the key values, all key values. I say the matrix bit will be zero. I'm saying the key value K1, K1 is what? I'm going to set the zero. K2 what? Set to zero. K3 what? K set to zero. K4 what? Set to zero. K4 five what? Set to zero. If I'm going to set all these guys at zero, right? What happened? Guys, you will have a loop in your network. If you're disabling key values, you will have loop in network. How? See. On R1, if you see now, do show IP protocol. Am I using any key values over there? All set to zero. All set to zero, right? And if you see now, do show IP root EHGRP. Can you see that? If I want to go from router number one, see this topology, right? If I want to go to this network from router number one, what's the matrix is happening? And if I want to go to, uh, to this network, what's the matrix is happening? And if I want to go to this network for zero, you know, what's the matrix is happening? One. See that? One, one, one. If you go back to the router number two now, do so IP root EGRP. Can you see the loop is happening? Tell me from R2, am I able to do the load balancing for this network? No, it's never possible. Can I do the load balancing from the R2 to this to this network? It means that from R2, if you not send any packet for this network, it will go by like this and like this. It's, is it possible? Never. Loop is happening, right? You're creating a loop over there. See, from R3, if you see, do so IP root EHGRP. What happened? I am doing the load balance perfect, man. I'm doing the load balance with the 4.0.0. Never possible. And if you go back to the router four now, do so IP root EHGRP. Great. I am doing the load balancing for the every network. From R4, if you go to the, this network, load balancing, 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 to path, never possible. From R1, all they have a single path. But if you check from R4, all they have multiple paths. So if you're going to disable the key values, right, you will have what happened? You will have an unstable network. You cannot identify from where it is, is it a best path, right? You cannot identify from where best path is determining. So first of all, it's never recommendation to make the key values, right? Zero, that you can say that disable, right? Second thing is that you're not allowed to change the key value because it's behave like a multiplier. If you're changing, you uh, like you know the key, uh, matrix will be changed. Third thing is that by default, K1 and K4 is going to use K3 is going to use because these are the static in the nature because load and reliability will be increased and decreased based on the network performance, right? If you're sending a huge amount of packet, can you imagine huge amount of packet? What happened? Load will be increased, matrix will be changed, and reliability will be decreased. That's why it's so dynamic in the nature. And fourth thing is what? If you want a minimum metric, so the cable is all one. One more thing that I want to discuss with you right now. Let me come to the default. How do I come to the default? I just say that no metric weights, no metric weights. 
and no metric weight so it comes in the default behavior no metric weight the key values has to be same on every person guys do so ip what we call out the do site protocol so if you see k1 and v3 is not same right now if you see do so ip protocol do so ip hip to close it can you see that i have a one success around this guy right i have one success route i can do one thing i'll just take a screen in the paint and i'll explain clip and this is my topology okay i'll do one thing i'll also interface zero slash one and go clip so the, i have increased the delay of this particular interface right this interface i didn't in, in, increase can you see if you're going to configure the delay the 10 it convert into the 100 right always in the microsecond if you configure the 100 it converts into 1000 if you configure the 1000 it will convert into 10000 so now what i can do right now i'll just take a screen And I'll also do one thing. Now, what I told you that your EHRP to closely table have a feasible system, right? And feasible system is behave like a backup path. And why do we need a feasible success in the route uh, topology table to make a faster convergence, right? Right, to make a faster convergence, we need a backup path. But there is a criteria. There is a criteria, like, you know, uh, if you, uh, if you know, make a passport or like any driving license and you have to, you have to follow some criteria, right? you need to have some documents like this, right? Same thing to get the feasible successor route in your topology table. If, for example, this person, right, this person says, Hey, I want this person says, Hey, I what happened? This person says, Hey, I want feasible successor. To get the feasible successor, you need to follow the this guy, the feasibility condition. What feasibility condition is saying that right now? Can you see that we have a feasible success, right? Can you see we have this is the feasible success, right? We have a and what this condition is saying that the in a simple language, if I'm going to tell you, if you understand this part, is good, right? Otherwise, I'll say in a simple language, the physical condition is saying that FC he the AD or we can say the RD of feasible success, right? should be lesser than the FD of successor. It means that the AD of physical successor, what is the AD of physical successor? 409600, right? Should be lesser than The FD of success, what is the FD of success? 4352. And it's lesser, right? That's why this is the reason, right? That's why we have this is the reason why we have this person in my topology table. And lesser, right? This is the AD, right? This is the FD. This is the AD or RD. Same thing. This is the, uh, the upper side. This is the FD and this is the RD and AD. 
and this is the successor. But what happened? If you see, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do uh, the delays of this interface is high right now. I'm just making the default format interface zero slash one. Interface zero slash one, no delay. Just make it default right now. And go to R three. Interface zero slash one. I'm going to increase the delay of this particular interface, right? This particular interface delay will be anything higher. Not a big deal. What happened? Now, if you see, do so IP root EHRP. I still have a successor route. That is this guy, right? That's my primary path. This is my secondary, right? As right now, I'm assuming this is the primary. But if you see, do we, do I have a receiver successor in my topology table? No, it's not there. Why it's not there? See the reason why it's not there. The reason is I'll do one thing. I'll shut down this interface, the primary one, to show you why this thing is not there. Shut down. Do so IP EHRP to close it. And now no shutdown. See why it's not there. Can you see the what this guy said? The AD of RD. It was a physical successor, right? You can see that it was very, very higher than this guy. So this guy is not matching, right? Is not satisfying FC. So if you're not going to satisfy FC, you will not have a feasible successor. Can you have a feasible successor in my topology table? See? No, I don't have. So if you're not going to satisfy, right? If you're not going to satisfy your feasibility condition, you will not have a feasible success. And if you don't have a feasible success, listen to me, guys. If you don't have a feasible success, if you don't have, just write on this point, in your topology table, you cannot perform unequal cost load balancing. If you know, then it's good. Otherwise, I'll teach you, right? This is a part of the CCNA. Whatever the things that we have this discussed, except the weekend classes, all this is part of your CCNA. I'm done of your CCNA. Let me know if you have any questions. If you just open your CCNA total family book, every single thing is there. So this is not, don't worry, this is not our part of those any CCNP and CCS. This all this part is the CCNA. If you just go through the CCNA books, every single thing is there. The reason is like why I'm starting from the CCNA level, you know, uh, see, it's not because of the time, right? If the thing is that if you're not able to understand the CCNA well, you will not, never understand the CCNP. And if you never understand the CCNP well, the CCI, forget it. So guys, who are right, you know, anyone has a question, guys? So guys, from my side, yeah. Sir, there was a one more topology you draw, like uh, router one, two, three in line, single line. You you draw that type of diagram before. 
thing where there. Is that? Uh, this one, this one, this one. Yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, the, the first entry is 65. Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. To reach 4.8 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, from R1, we have only single row. Yeah. Now tell me. In this in this case, how many routes? One route only will come in the routing table. Of course, we have successor. Yeah, success only is. yes, right. Yes, yes. For feasible successor, we need one more route. Yeah, yeah. If you want a feasible successor, you need to have a backup. And of course, that's a basic right. You need to so, have. So the FD successor means uh, FD means feasible uh, uh, distance. Ha, ha. Higher value. Lower, man. Lower. Should be. Lower. 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 फिर किसने डिलीट कर दिया भाई मेरी गलती नहीं है आप जो डिलीट कर रहे हैं ना मेरी गलती है मेरे पास बैकअप भी नहीं है किसी से मांग लो पीछे वाले क्लास में हुआ किसी के पास आस्क एनीवन इन द ग्रुप वो एज अ फेयर यू ओल्ड स्टूडेंट दे हैव छह वीडियोस थे छह में से सबने डिलीट कर दिया एक एक कर दिया हां पूछो राकेश हां 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 नहीं तो यहां पे एक ही बात है हां तो एक बात और देख ही सकते हो ना तो एफडी का जो वैल्यू है td value and fd value less less hona chahiye right ha lesser hona hamesha lesser hoga td value and fd agar td value less hai aur fd value nahi ho sakta na aise nahi tab to wo ho jayega na tab loop ban jayega isliye to feasibility condition aaya tha yahi karan tha feasibility condition banega this is the reason the reason to inform the feasibility is that's why to install nahi karega Work me over. Nay. EHRP kya karta pata. EHRP is like a routing by rumors. Routing by rumors in the sense of what? Jo information which a neighbor dega, may wahi information go badanga. Whatever the information my neighbor will tell me, I will believe it. That's meaning what? Routing by rumors. Whatever information, whatever the rumors that R2 will inform to me, hey, to get this network from me, the matrix is 45. Now you can you can calculate from here to here. Yeah. That's called the routing network. This is the EHRP. This is the issue is the EHRP routing network. That's not happening in the old stuff. Clear? Yeah. 